public university was in a very miserable position, position most. And the student enrollment in terms of finance took Bragg University. How much money I make for Bragg University? You see, that is not about money, it's about quality, about, about aspiration and students will come, you know, it's, it's really different. I'm for the entire two years, in terms of the so-called scholarship that we provide, uh, I'm using US dollars, okay? We, we, we committed 15 million US dollars, 15, one five. 15, one five million US dollars, yeah, in terms of, in terms of the scholarship, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. I will take a quick short break. I I, I should short break for a couple of months, and then uh, and then uh, the government there have few projects they want me to help. Uh, so I don't know. I may uh, depend how it goes. You are some especially mention your. This photo, which is my one of my favorite photos. Oh really? Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> I only, I only have, I only have that photo because, <laughs> you know, I, I'm probably my age, probably your parents' age, and during that time, uh, you know, you don't, you don't take pictures, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you, 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 you do not take picture, and then, uh, so I, I don't know how, how many years old I was. I don't know. I mean, probably two or three. Actually, I don't. And so that was the only picture. And I think I have, in addition, I still have two or three more pictures. That's it. And this will be my, my number four, number five picture. Seriously, so, so, sir. Right? Yeah. In those years, you have only, uh, for, in those years for 22 years yeah. or 24 years, you have only four or five yeah, pictures. Yeah, because I don't know why. I mean, uh, no iPhone, no, <laughs> no nothing. <laughs> and camera was expensive, right? Yeah. And even this, this was this was taken in studio, so you had to go to a studio to take picture. Yes, so uh, very few. I my home did not have a camera for sure. So of course, you know, uh, nowadays it's different. Now that everybody has iPhones, so everybody can take pictures. Now picture. everybody can take pictures. Everybody can take videos. Everybody yeah, everybody can. can like, yeah, everybody, everybody can take like. everybody can take video. And and I think it's very interesting how time change. <laughs> if you talk to your parents or your grandparents, you would know, right? <laughs> uh, and when I was little one, I, 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 I have no shoes. You know, I, <laughs> I walk to school uh, uh, bare, yeah. bare, barefooted, yeah, so, you know, but today it's all different. Today very different. I think that I can relate, not with me, but yeah. with my father's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they also, in Bangladesh, they also have to bear some kind of same hurdles. Yeah. And, and the high school was so far from our uh, village yeah, home. Yeah. And yeah. when they uh, they ha at least uh, need to travel five to six kilometers. Yeah, and by by food, it's two hours. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's it's by hours. Food. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, by food, and it is very hard. Uh, just you know, I, yeah. I, I now nowadays I can't even imagine. Yeah. That for a attending school, you have to travel t twelve kilometers by foot yeah. every day. How yeah. is that possible? So so time really has changed. Yes. Time really has changed, and. <clears throat> I was talking uh, two days ago. I was talking about my conversation with Sir Abe. Did they give you a copy of my Sir Abe and I? Uh, <coughs> no, I think they come and miss it. <laughs> they had to uh, give a copy. Uh, uh, yeah, they, they also give a sheet uh, like a paper. Yeah, uh, yeah. Your, yeah. Uh, so, so I um, I talk about and I talk about the the moon landing. You know, human being landed on moon in 1969. And so during that time, the computer, the computer had to calculate, you know, the speed, the velocity, and then you know, go to the moon and how to land. Yes. The calculation power of computer that America used has less calculation capability than any iPhone today. So you can you can imagine how all the world has changed, right? Now it is. I can't even imagine. Can we landed on the moon using less than? Uh, memories or less than uh, yeah. processor processing power yeah. of then, a then simple iPhone. iPhone uh, then iPhone. Yeah, and then it iPhone. is possible even that test. It's possible. So, so actually, many things are possible uh, as long as you 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 dare to do it. You live in Taiwanese, uh, uh, and you in your childhood you do not uh, get such privileged privileged life. And you live in Islam, mm. uh, so uh, 
what is your ma- uh, ma- what is this time then what is, what is your memory can you say something happiest or saddest <laughs> it's it's very interesting i mean it's a good question even though you know we're so poor uh, as i say you know i only have one picture you know how do you feel them <laughs> i'm but we i did not feel i was poor i feel i was very rich you know and i feel I don't know whether it's cultural or because it's simply but I, I feel if I study hard, I get myself educated, I have a chance. I have a chance. This, I will study and get ready and perhaps my chance will come. So that is, you have to have the mindset. Me the mindset how about how to work your way out. There was no social program at all. Did nobody come to help us? Nobody, I can tell nobody. No, no brag, no, no, no nothing, right? It's and right. and that is that is the mindset again. It's the mindset thing because I knew when we are not we have to nobody to depend on except ourselves. We depend on ourselves, right? My classmate, <coughs> some of them from quite wealthy family, right? I, I remember when I was little, uh, you know, my <coughs> couple classmates they have car in their family. Okay, at this time I had car is big deal, right? And then when I talk about car, this streamline the car wheel and this, I I did not understand a, a single word what they say. So they talk about terminology of car. I have no idea. What do you mean? I feel so not, not be able to get into conversation, right? <coughs> but you know what? I was okay. I say if I, you know, I study and then I, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I can improve myself. You worked hard and you determined. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think that is basically, <coughs> at least my generation, uh, when I grew up in Taiwan, that's what most people thought in that way, my generation. And, and I don't know whether it's cultural or not. So we, we did not blame on somebody else. We did not beg. We did not beg. We, we did not depend on anybody else. We did not depend on any social program. Zero. Everything we did ourselves by ourselves. Right? Yeah, so, so, so you have to have that, you know. To, to, and I think, uh, <coughs> I do think, and, but I think one thing is, is one thing I, I I don't know too much about education. One thing is the education in Taiwan was free at that time, you know. So you 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 went to school until uh, ninth grade is all free, and that's good. So they kind of release a lot of pressure. And the Taiwanese government was very keen on education. So Taiwanese government they would go to every single household. If you're a kid, turn six, you must go to you know school. You must go to school and then otherwise they will try to penalize you or whatever. So 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 here so so if you have a poor family, right? You say oh, it's so poor I, I need my kids to, to be able to work to income and come say no. You take care of the income is your job. The kids have to go to school. Every single one if the government has a record when they think six years old, they have to go to school. No matter what your family situation is, you must go to school. You uh, school. Did, uh, bachelor in electrical engineering. Yeah. And did you uh, do it by your choice, or it, it was uh, forced by government or anyone? No, what it's, is the system? It's by my choice. I mean, in uh, in Taiwan at that time, uh, run a bit different. Is is you go this kind of? It's kind of a bit like HSC, but it's not HSC. <laughs> you actually take the exam, you know, four or five subjects and then you score, add them together. And depending on how high you score, you can choose which university, which department to go to. So uh, my department, electrical engineer, was one of the highest scores. So I had no idea what I have to study. You know, a, a, a very high, high score, electrical engineer and medical medicine, you know, become doctor and also international trade. So, so it's not everybody wants to go to the go to. You have to score very high. You have to score like top, 100 in the entire country in order, to, in order to be able to go in. So, so, I, so that's why I chose electrical, electrical engineering. But I have no idea. I really, at that time, I really had no idea what I was interested in. Because nobody told me, you know, you see, uh, unlike today, that the kid, they can explore, right? Yeah. And so that I keep saying, you have to do your interest. You can, because you know, you have more chance. And when my age, I have no idea what I was interested in. I think uh, uh, first, uh, at the first semester, you uh, somehow uh, failed at she put it one to one on one course, but I saw it. But end of the day, you got a PhD from electrical engineering and computer science, and that and that is a, actually it's okay. I mean, it did have no correlation, <coughs> and so so I mean one thing for example, I I something particular about here Bangladesh system, you know, 
if a CGPA has to get to 3.5, otherwise I can apply for master program, you have to become professor, your undergrad CGPA has to be whatever, whatever. I think that is not very good. I, I'm not talking about myself, I'm talking about uh, there was a Nobel Prize winner. He failed chemistry in freshman, just very much that I failed el electronic uh, circuit. He failed chemistry in freshman, and his father told him, no, forget it, you, you, are, you cannot become a good chemist. And they told him he, like he, he won a Nobel Prize in chemistry. So at least you and I have something in common. Yeah. We both failed in Chipotle one more, one, <laughs> one course. <laughs> no, I fail. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I fail is because I never pay attention. I say, okay, I'm in university now. I don't want to study. So, and then, oh. oh my God, <laughs> I had to study. So I fail is because of that. And, and also because I was not particularly interested in that at all. I yeah. also, uh, I did, I make good results in other subjects, but I somehow don't uh, feel interest, interest in electrical engineering or yeah. that circuit course. Yeah. So that's how I somehow. Yeah, I mean, I was not interested in it either. Interest is a big, big matter yeah. in that case. Yeah, so I, I explore, so I suggest you explore in the case and find out what, what really, what really make tick you. So then uh, after Taiwan, you go, uh, went to Berkeley uh, to get PhD. Then uh, tell me about your Berkeley days. So, uh, in those days, I uh, you did you at the end of the end of your PhD tenure, uh, you also tried to explore some other subjects. Yeah, because uh, because as I say, I I was not particularly interested in electrical engineering, and I went to PhD because PhD gave me full scholarship. Uh, you know, so so I mean it's full scholarship. Family, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. So I could do that. So. I went and I was thinking, I was just thinking to graduate and make money, you know, that time that's what I was thinking. But when I was writing the thesis, I said that I want to explore something else. And one thing is Berkeley was, Berkeley is a very open university, very open. You know, you can do what you want to do. So I, I'm, uh, I, I'm grateful that they allowed me to do that. <laughs> so, I, so I get to know a few professors who they don't become very famous. By, 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 it, it's not by design, but just purely by chance, yeah. And they don't become very famous and they, they actually change the course. I had a story from your speech that you asked uh, a question uh, to your uh, economics professor, uh, Janet Yellen, who is now a treasury uh, uh, secretary of the uh, Biden administration. So, uh, he said, uh, he, she uh, uh, replied that that is a Nobel Prize winning question. So we want to know what is that question? That oh, quite many questions, actually quite many questions. I went to her office hour every, every time, like uh, she has two hour office hour. I went to her hour, hour every time. I asked a lot of questions and, and it's a lot of questions. But one of the questions is interesting. Uh, she asked me, she asked me say, you know, why I'm interested in economics. I have no idea of answer. I say, oh, okay. I I'm engineer major, but I don't see number is a number. I say, what do you mean? I say, for example, if there's one percent unemployment rate in America, that's why one million people no job, right? In America, roughly. I say, okay. I say, but I see more than that. And and she said, oh, what do you mean? Well, if this person is the head of household, if this person is responsible for four people. Then it's not just this person it's without four job. People. Yeah, it's four. It's four million people. And <coughs> and he and she said interesting. And then I say, but I think more than that. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> and I said, you know, because most people they draw their dignity from the job, right? Their dignity, their life meaning from the job. If you lose the job, people lose the dignity, even lose their marriage, create a lot of social problems. And she said, very interesting. So, that was when I was uh, at Berkeley. 30 years later, when, after she became the Federal Reserve Chair in uh, Federal Reserve, and she was interviewed by Financial Times reporter. Professor Yevon, why, so why are you so keen on unemployment rate? Why are you so paying so much on unemployment rate? And this is what she said. She said, I don't see unemployment rate as number. <laughs> It's she, dignity. She took, she took it answer. <laughs> no, I cannot. I cannot come for that. But <laughs> she said it's dignity. It's marriage. And I, I was fine. Oh, I was pretty much jumping out of my chair. <laughs> the, the, yeah. 
you are such a secretary just to be run sir as <laughs> no you you cannot say that but i it's pure, pure coincidental it could be purely coincidental okay. so they were so actually a lot of idea <laughs> a lot of idea and and so at so at the end uh, she told me say maybe you become my husband's uh, student and of course i did not say yes and husband they don't want a nobel prize so at that time when i get to know them uh jenna yellen and her, and her husband they are they are kind of like just a professor you know a no-name professor but of course jenna yellen they don't she become the chief economist of white house and then become uh federal reserve chair chair and now is now is the second now is the okay, treasury secretary, secretary yeah by, by yeah by the administration and and her husband won a nobel prize so i was lucky on that i was completely lucky i have no idea about who they are and i just say what i want to say so sometimes you have to think about it sometimes it's good to say what you want to say don't, don't overthink if i think too much if i've thought too much at the time say, oh they are a big sharp professor i should be careful so it's for the encouragement to go to economics and and uh, i think jenna yellen she wrote a recommendation letter very very strong very strong letter yeah so so i was able to, to be accepted by mit yeah economics wow. so you know it's interesting yeah interesting yeah. so the point is you have to be always straightforward honest about what you think you never know where you come and i did not expect what i told him 30 years ago he she said it <laughs>
Uh, <coughs> so that's why we want to break this away, this kind of stereotype about. That's why I say it's all mindset issue. It's all mindset issue. Yeah. yeah? Everything is possible. Pretty much everything is possible. Then, sir, you go into Wall Street and uh, you move to MIT to do PhD in uh, economics, and with ExxonMobil, you also uh, did some projects. I think that. And then, then you go into Peking. And what is your, tell me something about your Peking journey. What is it like? I, <coughs> you see, I was, is it, you know, uh, uh, Peking or Beijing uh, in China, you know, uh, China and Taiwan is very much like Russia and Ukraine <laughs> the relationship. Oh. I think uh, you probably know that. So I grew up. I'm I'm Chinese. I'm really ethnic Chinese, but I grew up in Taiwan instead of uh, in. You're uh, by one uh, Chinese. Yeah, I yeah. So, so uh, I mean, it's different. Okay. So I. It's long story short. Uh, it's basically um, I, w I have this conversation with a uh, Peking University and. I was not looking for a job, and, and they talk about something, something. And I said, why don't we think about this and that? Meaning, you know, I kind of ask them to imagine something. I use the word. And I said, oh, that's a good idea. Said, OK, you know, we offer you a position. So I went. That's why I went. And I went is also because, you see, China is such an important country. And if, uh, if I'm able to have impact on the smartest Chinese, Peking University is is China's Harvard or Oxford, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they may bring good things to China and good things to the world. You know, when I teach, when I educate a, a citizen, I'm not educating you as Bangladesh. I want to educate you as a global person. And maybe you're interested in Bangladesh, it's good. But you should be a global person, right? Education, what do we call university? University is from universe, from universal. Universal. Yeah, universal. Right? So that is really the purpose. So I went there, and then because if I thought I could educate the smartest people in China, so you know that make the the country is part of the world smooth, and then it benefit everybody. So that's why I went, and I think uh, I, I did a good job. I must say I did a good job. Yeah, it, I think it was moonshot, as you say. Yeah, it, it's my it was, it was a successful moonshot. Then you said went to Oman. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I was approached to try to build a new university. Uh, it's kind of American type of university. Uh, and it was really, uh, it was everything pretty much like ready to go, you know. Uh, but, but the oil price simply, uh, oil price prompted. And then so they, they depend on all your revenue to finance the university. So I somehow get stuck. But, but there was a very, uh, there was actually a very ambitious journey uh, undertaken as well. My, my imagination again. I want to make it a bit like Oxford or Cambridge or the Middle East, and the government was very excited about that. <coughs> you know, I have a huge land, 300 acre land, uh, 300 acre. I don't know how big, but it's big, and all these different college we all design well, but it's financial issue. So, so to not get stuck. The oil, oil price. Is oil price. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so it got stuck. Then, sir, uh, after HQ and uh, after doing something HQ in M MIT. Yeah. Uh, you did some project, I guess. Yeah. Uh, then you came to finally break, yeah. break, break you, and after uh, you come, after you uh, coming, uh, there is uh, BU 2.0. What is BU 2.0? So, so basically, in a nutshell, uh, let me share a bit with story. <coughs> when when I first, because uh, I when they approached me for this position by chance, I never heard. First, of all, I never heard of Bragg. I never heard of Bragg University. I never heard, heard about Sir Abe. Yeah. So, uh, in a long story, long story short, uh, uh, I think what in Sir Abe's mind, he he like to have a harbor of South Asia, you know, and and we two talk. We have great chemistry. We have great chemistry, so they, so we went off from there, and break be break universe two point zero is kind of highlight what needs to be done to get there, and so it's not like status quo. It's not like what we're doing. It's like what we should be. It's it's not like oh we do every day like this. It's what we should do to get the universe go there. <coughs> so that is break two point zero. I will ask my sister to give you a, a copy, and then it's very simple. I explain it quite well. So that is, that is break U 2.0. Kind of want to, at least use a term, try to separate what we're going to do and, and different, how, it, how it's going to be different from the past 20 years. 
yeah, so that is pretty much uh, uh, what I promised uh, Sir Abe, and this probably also what he promised he would support me. What is your future plan, Simon? I mean, after the after break, what do you intending to intending to do? I uh, uh, a lot of people ask me to stay. Uh, I think government student uh, love very overwhelming. <laughs> Hey, uh, some even say I'm the national interest. <laughs> uh, some say, oh, well, you know, I just call what they say. It's not what I say. So uh, I will take a quick short break. I I, I should short break for a couple of months, and then uh, and then uh, the government there have few projects they want me to help. Uh, so I don't know. I may uh, depend how it goes, and, and so I may. I may continue on education uh, 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 venture uh, in emerging market, meaning in like a non-US, non-UK. So, so it is. But I have a theme in my life. So, uh, in my theme, the life, I think probably from the, the the speech or the letter there, I, you know, I I have my philosophy, my personality, and my and my background. So. I basically, I pretty much follow my hard thing. I don't confine, I don't define what kind of job I'll be doing. As long as, as long as I can find it's interesting, and and I probably can draw some some meaning by doing that, then I will do it. Yeah. So so I, uh, I yeah I will I will finalize in the next couple of months. That yeah. means you are staying in Bangladesh. Uh, you see. One never said never. <laughs> <laughs> you are making mystery again. <laughs> It's the future country is not, it's not those idiots at my age. I must say that, sorry. The, you are kind of future country because you are so pure and your knowledge is runs worldwide and you have not been corrupted by money or power. I understand. Keep a pure mind, you know, keep a pure mind, you actually can change this country. That is what I will, that is why I'm coming to Bangladesh for. <coughs> I'm not here for money. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <sorry. laughs> I'm, I'm, here, I'm here for something, you know, it's a fulfillment in life, right? You know, like you do something and then you feel, okay, uh, uh, that is kind of some, some sort of fulfillment, right? <laughs> some sort of fulfillment. And, and that, is, that is what I'm pursuing. Yeah, it's, yeah. So this, to me, is right change the job or break the This is not a job. This is not a job. So, so if, you are, if I think I'm not able to keep pushing, then, then, then there's no point for me to stay. That's why you're probably interested in knowing why, why I'm leaving. There's no point for me to stay. And maybe, maybe it's not mature yet. Society is mature. Maybe we have to wait for a I think what in Sir Abe's mind, he, he likes to have a harbor of South Asia, you know. And and we two talk, we have great chemistry. We have great chemistry. So they, so we went off from there, and break, break universe 2.0 is kind of highlight what needs to be done to get there. 
And so it's not like status quo, it's not like what we're doing. It's like what we should be doing. It's, it's not like, oh, we do every day like this. It's what we should do to get the universe to go there. <coughs>